Hi there and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and I have to confess it's been far too long since my last playthrough and here I am again and this time I want you to walk you through a complete session of Prophecy. A game by Vlada Schwartil. I think most of you should know this fella as he is also responsible for the awesome Mage Knight. But better be warned, I've never played Prophecy before. Just got it from a math trade, which I'm really happy I finally got hold of it. So please consider this as more or less a personal learning experience rather an actual playthrough. But still, I hope you have some fun watching me learning this game. And as usual, if you find something I'm doing wrong, and pretty sure there will be some things I will be I will be doing wrong please let me know and I will correct that in my next video once upon a time a dynasty of wise and powerful kings ruled the land they protected the kingdom from raiders as well as from internal strife and took care of the peaceful life of their people Behind this piece were five ancient and powerful artifacts, which are said to have been made by gods at the beginning of time. But nothing lasts forever. The peace and quiet were broken at last, when one of the kings left his three sons as heirs. Their desire for power set the two elder sons against each other, and a furious battle for succession began. Chaos ensued. The air was filled with smoke, and the land was soaked with blood of the innocent. Finally, the eldest brother opened the gates of the worlds and summoned demons to help him. How foolish he was to hope that he could control these inhuman creatures. Demons rushed through the land and completed the havoc started by the wolf. They killed both princes, stole the royal artifacts and took them into unseen worlds. The youngest brother disappeared without a trace. So people lost the favor and gifts of the gods as well as their king and thus began centuries of anarchy and chaos. Bands of robbers and brigands roamed the roads, demons settled in dark deserted places and rumor had it that even the dead came to life and strolled the land. There is a legend older than time which foretold all these things. It spoke about the fall of the royal kin and the coming of demons. But the end of this legend gives people hope. Three times over three centuries, people and the land will suffer for the sins of the powerful before the hero of royal plot appears, dressed in the armor of the ancient rulers and settle down on the king's throne to stop the anarchy and chaos. 900 years have passed and no hero of royal plot has appeared. Old manuscripts were lost, and people no longer cared about the stories of the ancients. Some noblemen tried to declare themselves the heirs of the throne, but no one possessed the ancient artifacts, the only real proof. What if the last of the princes set out into the world and his blood blended with the common people? What? If one of the many ordinary adventurers wandering through the land is predestined to become the king, what if it is you? Okay, and what sounded like the intro of a very old-fashioned Man of War song is basically the story of prophecy. And in this game, two to five players struggle to find four of the five artifacts in order to claim the throne of the land. But before you get too excited, I will let you know that I'm playing the No Final Battle variant here. So basically the player who possesses two of the artifacts will be the winner instead of four. Because otherwise I have the feeling this could be a pretty long exercise, especially when you play this game alone. And from the recommendations I've seen on the Geek, it seems that the three player variant should be the best setup for this game. So I will also play through three characters at the same time. And here is the pile of characters. I think there are 10 different characters in this game. They are not so different from each other, but the main important thing is their starting strength and the starting willpower. And of course, which favorite or starting guilds the character is 
they are basically a member of, for the Druid, that would be the forest camp and the monastery. I will now draw three characters from these ten and we'll do the setup and I think as of then I will just start playing and we'll explain the rules as I go. Yeah and guess what the druid was one of our three characters. The druid starts with three strength and six willpower so he's not really balanced guy and all the characters start with three experience and three gold. And then we have the Paladin who is balanced, so he starts the game with 4 strength and 4 willpower. And what does he say? My god has given me the strength to fight. So, if I pop you one upside the head, I'll just be doing his will. Nice. And last but not least, we have the Illusionist also with 4 strength and 4 willpower. And what does she say? Sure, for the same price you could hire a dozen thugs. But I doubt they do a better job than I will. Pretty self-confident. I like that. Next we have a look where those characters start and you take the topmost skill that's printed on their character card. So the Illusionist would start at the Magic Tower, the Paladin and the Fortress and the Druid gathering some herbs here in the forest camp. In order to speed up the game, the rules recommend to do some first cards. So we will reveal the top most cards from each of the guilds. So here we have the Magic Tower, Mass Decay. Then we have the Monastery. This is Miraculous Healing. The Fortress, we have the Concentration. The Forest Camp, we have the Horsemanship. And at the Thieves Guild, we have thievery which is basically a spell and then we have a look at the chance cards and looking for something now oh, here we already are successful so this is a forest chance card plays a new adventure card in every forest space so let's do that as the druid will be the starting player we will start here with the first adventure card here we have a mine gnome there's another forest that's an ancient scroll. Here we have a forest. That's a magic stone. And last but not least, here we have an another forest. And here we have a dark wizard with a willpower of five. Okay, I think this would be a nice target for the druid who is not too far away. But of course, we will now officially start our playthrough. But before we get started, let's have a final look at our goals of this game. So here are those astral planes, you see them here. There are five astral planes all around the board. And on those spaces, there is one artifact at the basically the last card in this little stack here. We have a lesser guardian, this pink one here, and we have a greater guardian. I think it's the name with this purple one here. In order to get one of these artifacts here or the artifact in this astral plane I have to be adjacent to this um, plane here. So for example from the forest camp I can try to attack this astral plane. I have to announce it. So in this case I'm not allowed to move. I really say I want to attack the astral plane here. Then I will first have to fight this um, lesser guardian when I'm able to defeat him it will be out of the game then I have to fight the greater guardian and if I'm also successful here I'm allowed to take that artifact with me. And again as I'm playing the quick variant the first player to reach two of those artifacts will be the winner and like talisman here player versus player battles are allowed and of course also encouraged especially when one of those characters is carrying an artifact. Okay, what's the game round for a player? The first thing all the players would do is draw a chance card. So what's going on in the world? Normally new challenge cards or opportunities will be placed on the board, stuff like that. Then it would be the actual player turn or player turns. First thing that a player can do is move. Sometimes there are spaces where you don't want to move, then you can do some other things. For example, you can move one space without paying any cost. You can rent a horse, then you have to pay one gold, then you would be allowed to 
move up to two spaces for one gold i could use a port if something is there and for two gold i could use a magic gate basically to teleport it or i can use movement ability stuff like that or i can attack an astral plane from an adjacent place i think i already explained that if i land on a space where there is a creature, I have to battle this creature, a draw or a loss, and your turns so really have to be successful. That's pretty similar to Talisman, I guess. Then I can battle another character, which is optional. So when I land on a space with another character, I can announce, hey, I want to attack you. Then I can use the possibility of the space. Of course, once again, if I have a draw or lost my fight against a creature, my turn is over, though I cannot move on here. And then would be the end of the round. Then I see if I have any limits reached. So my limit for gold is 15 and the same for experience. And I'm also have a limit of seven items and seven abilities. But again, I have to get rid of those at the very end of my turn. So I can still use them during my turn. And then at the end of the turn, I can get rid of my eighth ability, for example. Okay, let's start with the druid and the druid will draw the chance card. And here I drew the planes. Place a new adventure card in every plane space. So pretty similar to the forest space. So again, this is something to bring some more encounters to the game board. Okay, now we go with the planes. And here's another rule. In a normal space, there are always two of those adventure cards at the maximum. The first one will always be revealed. And if I would draw a second card to a space like this forest here, then this would be put face down. And only if I enter this space, I'm allowed to look at the second card. As the planes currently don't have any opportunities or cards on it, all of those cards will be played face up. So we can do that immediately. So again, we start here with the planes next to the druid. Here we have the skeletal wizards. Okay, that's already a fancy one. Then we have an old pirate. Yo ho ho, I'm definitely into pirates. What do we have here? A lost library. Wow, this illusionist here is pretty lucky. So she can try to gain some of the stuff here. I have to really have a look at those cards. I have to say, I have not have a look at some of the cards at all so i'm pretty blind in respect to all these lesser guardians greater guardians and so on so really for me this is a brand new experience and this is i did that really it was my decision not to have a look at those cards but still there's another plane here what do we have an angry mob Wow, three lives, so this is really a tough one, but also brings seven experience points, which is quite a lot. And last but not least, we have one plane here, and here we have the collector. And I already noticed the board gets pretty messy with cards pretty soon, to be honest. So this is basically the first turn and always a lot going on. But to be honest, the game board is not really a beauty. So I'm not that sad at all. I, to be honest, I like this old school artwork a bit, but again, it's not really a very modern design what we are looking here. But I guess this game is still pretty cool. I'm really looking forward to this playthrough. Let's start the turn of the druid and the forest camp guild basically offers the horsemanship as a special ability, but we have to give up eight experience points and right now we only have three so that's far from affordable to us but what can we do with this horsemanship you pay nothing to ride a horse this is pretty cool to be honest and if i pay one gold i would be allowed to ride a pegasus up to four spaces wow okay that's definitely a good thing if you want to move around the board but again right now we are far from being able to acquire this ability here Right now, there's not much going on here. We have the collector down here. He will pay you twice the price for one of your undamaged items except an artifact. So this could be cool, but right now I don't have anything with me. And 
in order to move to this planes I would have to one two three okay I wouldn't be able to go there anyway so even with a horse I would not be allowed to travel to the plane so I'm really tempted to go to the forest and battle this dark wizard here he would give me four experience points still not enough to get the horsemanship special ability but I think it's definitely better than nothing and I could get some potions and scrolls from this dark wizard and as I have let's say also pretty high willpower this would be a good match for the truth so yeah let's do that again Moving one space to an adjacent area is free of charge. So this is my normal travel. So I will walk to this forest here. And now I would have to fight this dark wizard here. He has a willpower of five. So this is something I need to beat basically. So again, this is talisman like I will roll two dice, one for me, one for for the creature I will add my stat in this case my willpower and whoever has the highest result will win on a tie this is basically means there is a tie and my turn will immediately end my bonus here would be pretty cool again draw three rare items keep all potions and scrolls and discard the rest so this is definitely something worth looking into as the Dark Wizard only lists willpower, I don't have to pay any willpower in order to initiate a willpower battle or magical battle. Normally, if the character has or monster has two strength stated first, then I could force him into a mental battle basically. But then I would need to spend two of my willpower in order to initiate that battle but in this case this is also free of charge again i have a six he has a five the black die is for the dark wizard the white die is for me and i'm leading by one point already so let's see what comes around okay that's a four worth a two so he has a nine i have a six which already means i have lost my first strength point and the strength point is also my health basic and this is a pretty cool mechanic so now i'm only having two strength points so the next fight i have to deal with my bare hands basically or with any weapon so a melee combat or something like that i would only have two points unless i heal somewhere in the i think in the city or in the village or, or some other spots here and the same would apply for willpower but right now i'm pretty good at willpower and have not spent anything so I'm definitely doing okay, but of course I'm already lost my first health point. But as I lost the battle against this creature, my turn ends, so we can jump to the end of round. Of course, I'm not at my limit here, so I can directly jump over to the paladin here at the fortress. Here we would have the concentration, which would be a spell. This would also cost me eight experience points. Again, I start with three, so I'm definitely short of some of those. Okay, um, what can I do now? Of course, first of all, I will draw my chance card. And here we have the refreshing wind. Heal up to two health. All other players heal up to one health. Okay, that's definitely good news for the druid as he just regained his lost strength point. Awesome. I think the paladin will move to the city he will never make it against this angry mob for once the angry mob has a strength of six which is definitely something and i have to fight the angry mob three times so i have to be successful three times in a row in order to defeat it good thing is i would gain seven experience points but not much or no real reward here so i think i will move here into the mountains basically for free and then during my next turn I will charter or borrow a horse or not buy a rent a horse and will then move one two spaces to the city and from there I will be able to do some more meaningful stuff and last but not least we come to the illusionist who will also draw a chance card and here we have the city merchant. The city received new goods, two new rare items. Wow, that's good. Discard all older items in the city. So let's have a look at those two rare items. 
Okay, let's draw oops, the first one and the second one. And here we have the Ranger's Boots for 10 gold. Wow, that's definitely something. If you walk, you can move up to space. That's also pretty cool, to be honest. And in forests and mountains at plus one in Battle of Strength. Oh, this is definitely something that's pretty useful for the Paladin. That, that's cool. And then we have Thor's Hammer, a crushing weapon. Awesome. In a Battle of Strength at plus one against Undead at an additional plus one. Okay, wow, that's plus two versus a Skeleton. Can also be thrown in a Battle of Strength. This gives you a bonus of plus one on one roll, but the Hammer becomes damaged. Okay, that's definitely something to keep in mind, but it's also far from being affordable to us. So this costs eight gold as well. And again, we start with only three. Okay, here the magic tower, we have the mass decay. Use on your turn, but not in battle. Discard an item, except an artifact, and recharge up to three magic. And this is finally a, a which you would be able to gain because it only costs two experience points but it's overall not that great so I think I will pass on this and I think I will either move to the forest or to the plains here here at the forest we have the ancient scroll announce how much magic you use to decipher the scroll roll a die and add it to the magic expanded if the total is seven or more gain one willpower from the bank well, this is definitely something yeah, I think I might take that one. And here we have the Lost Library. All the wisdom of man is found within these walls. Perchance you'll learn something new. Pay three gold, draw the top card from any guild's ability stack and keep it. Wow, that's also cool. The problem is I cannot afford it because in order to travel here, I have to rent a horse and then I would be down to only two gold. But I think, why not? Let's move up here to the forest and then I will try to decipher the ancient scroll here. And again, I have to announce how much magic to use. Roll a die and add to the magic expanded if the total is seven or more. So I think in this case, I will spend three magic. Or should I add all four of them? Huh. Now let's keep it at three. And then I will roll the die and I really hope for a four or more here. Let's see. Ah, oh, that's only a two. Okay, so I lost my willpower without any gain. And like all the opportunity cards, this ancient scroll will be discarded. What a pity. Okay, this was the first round of my playthrough of Prophecy. I <laughs> really hope I haven't made any mistakes so far, but pretty sure I have so keep them coming I think I will stop it here so because of the introduction don't want to get the videos too long I think with the next episode I will definitely play two or maybe even three turns of this game hope to see you soon in my next episode until then bye bye <laughs>